Greetings everyone, it's Reed here, your old time buddy. And today, let's talk about this. Now, we had the nice nuclear explosion to look at. And I'm actually talking about the ones shot way up high to sort of destroy the world. You know, nuclear EMP events, right? I've done a lot of reading, research, got a lot of physics stuff, all sorts of documentation. I'm planning to do a real in-depth series about this. But today, we got a quick update about something I learned that was really interesting about this. I mean, super interesting. It's something I had never encountered before. Didn't even realize it was in the literature and the you know, military's been working on this sort of thing. Somehow, I completely missed it. Sometimes that happens. Looking at all these other things, digging into stuff, miss an important detail. But we're gonna go over that. And I got some notes here, because I wanted to be a little precise in what we're talking about today. During the Cold War, both sides were vying for positions of utter craziness and total insanity, willing to do outrageous, wild things in an effort to gain total, complete nuclear supremacy over the other. However, some really crazy stuff happened. So on July 9th, 1962, the US government took a 1.4 megaton thermonuclear warhead, shot it in to the upper atmosphere, approximately 400 kilometers above the Earth's surfaces, and detonated it. This test was known as Starfish Prime later, and it produced a very bright aurora that could be seen for hundreds and hundreds of miles. Now, while it was hundreds of miles away from Hawaii, it actually caused EMP effects on Hawaii. They weren't expecting that. We had street lights go out, we had uh, cables, uh, breakers go, we had fuses blown, uh, telecommunication issues, a lot of odd little surprises. They weren't expecting that. They really didn't think an EMP could travel that far. And that was what I was always interested in. That's sort of the EMP piece, you know. Ooh, this big giant thing where he could put a big weapon up or a weapon optimized for massive gamma rays to destroy the entire country, right? Big time concern. And I've done a lot of reading on that. However, some new things came out. And in fact, check the description, okay? There's a really good article that talks about an effect I hadn't heard of. And that is, after Starfish Prime was gone, done with and all that, and the satellites, the few we actually had up there at the time, were well out of range of this thing, they started getting destroyed. Months after the detonation of Starfish Prime. Hmm. Months? Months? What the heck? In fact, the world's first telecommunications satellite, Telstar, was destroyed in this. Well, it turns out, in later research and all that, they discovered something very interesting. In that the charged particles and all that stuff, these high energetic electrons released by the thermonuclear weapon, well, they hung around. They trapped in the Van Allen radiation belts and they sort of converged on the magnetic field lines of the Earth. Here, here's a photo of Earth's magnetic field lines. Yes, this photo is kind of a mess. A little odd, different, stuff like that. And yeah, it's a sort of a computer estimation of the Earth's magnetic fields and all that stuff. Now these magnetic field lines are sort of like the peaks and valleys in sort of like the waves in the ocean, right? So there's sort of ups and bottoms. The charged particles most likely gathered all in there. And they were in the Van Allen radiation belts, okay? Now in the Van Allen radiation belts, there's two of them, okay? And they're at different positions above the Earth's surface. One is from 1,000 to 8,000 miles, and that's called belt one. The second one is from 12,000 to 25,000 miles, both above the Earth's surface. Here's a quick photo I grabbed showing sort of what they look like. I mean, what they're at in position around the Earth, okay? Well, interesting thing about that, those radiation belts are actually right in the middle of two very important positions above the Earth's surface. Leo, or low Earth orbit position, and Geo geosynchronous position, okay? Now, Leo is at 1,269 miles, about, 
right around there. You know, you could have a little bit of variance depending on weight and stuff like that. And Geo is 22,236 miles, okay? Dead center of both those belts. So that nuclear weapon, Starfish Prime, left all these charged particles out there. And, you know, they eventually coalesced, gathered, and collided with satellites and took them out. Wow, that's pretty interesting. Now, satellites do have systems up there for radiation scrubbing and all that stuff, but these are very, very highly energetic electrons trapped in these magnetic fields and the Van Allen radiation belts, and they just were zapping stuff. And the reason this article is very interesting to me is the government is looking for ways to clean up space after a nuclear weapons exchange. Now, it's long known and planned. You, it's open source. You can find all the materials out there. Just Google some of the stuff of nuclear warfare scenarios and all that stuff. But U.S., China, Russia, we all have plans to deploy EMP weapons as part of the attack to maximize the ability to destroy the enemy's ability to respond. It's just something that's part of the war plans. Okay, so they fully intend it. Now... The problem is, is some of the things I'd assume, like a lot of satellites would still be functioning, other things like that, and that, you know, depending on what's going on, you might be able to get feeds or listen in or other stuff like that from some of these things and get some stuff maybe from other parts of the world, news and all that. But it may not be a permanent thing. You could have a lot of satellites get taken out from all these charged particles left up there in space. Total surprise to me. Completely surprised me. I'm like, wow, there's a there's an assumption I had about some of the ways this scenario plays out that just pfft, out the window now. Gone. Not right anymore. And I love that. I love finding new information like this that really clears things up and goes, huh, I had no idea. And it's really interesting to me. So I'm bringing this up to everyone else's attention. That when these nuclear weapons go off and all this stuff, they leave massive amounts of charged particles. Now you're wondering, you know, are they going to hang around there forever? If we don't clean them up, you know, like the military is researching how to do right now? Well, no, they actually get uh, naturally brought down to a lower energy state. It's basically when they get knocked out of the Van Allen radiation belts and out of the magnetic trap up there and hit the Earth's atmosphere and cause an aurora. You know, it's the electron breaking and it causes that massive, beautiful glow in the sky. And that pretty much takes the energy out of it and then it's harmless. Right? But while they're up there hitting our satellites, that's bad, you know. And there's only so much shielding these things can have before, you know, you fry something. Everything has an upper limit to how much energy it can absorb before you cook the darn thing. Way of everything up there. And a lot of these things can wear out. And tons of other satellites, you know, they have issues related to solar flares and all that stuff, but we, this is worse, you know, I mean, well, depending on the solar flare, you know, big solar flare could be just as bad, obviously. But, very interesting article. So like I said, check the description and go read this. It's really interesting to know something like this was a possibility. I didn't know. News to me. So, all those satellites I thought might still be up there, you know, just gotta find a way to tap into them after a nuclear exchange or an EMP event. You may not have nearly as many. After a couple months, a lot could get taken out. <laughs> Total shocker to me. So, check it out. Now, for those of you that have actually hung around this far to the video, thank you. I appreciate it. You're the loyal viewers. And in fact, I really appreciate all the viewers on this channel. And you probably wanted to read, where the hell have you been, dude? It's been like two and a half weeks and all this other stuff or something like that. Um... Kind of crazy around here. Uh, I'm actually, one of the things that most people don't, well, you probably can guess. I'm a huge introvert. People wear me out. People been wearing me out lately. Um, the holidays and me this year were annoying, really annoying, especially with the family. Oh, boy. Yeah. yeah I mean, well, biological family at least, you know. Most of the family that's my friends, I mean, friends that are family, so like that, I don't have any issues with them. But the people I'm directly related to by blood, man, stuff. And also, you know, I've gotten this new friend I'm working on, uh, been getting along really well, connecting, stuff like that. But they pop in and out a lot. They're kind of like, here for a little while, and then they're gone. Here for a little while, and gone. And I'm like, what's going on? 
you know, I've, I've actually got a pretty good idea. I'm usually pretty good about sussing these things out and everything else uh, and stuff. And Because I'm working on getting them out here is what my goal is. Because they'll be great to join out here with every one of us. And they're looking to move anyways. So I'm working on that. But it's a process. Because they're bouncing in and out. And I'm like, hey, what's going on? You okay? Everything all right? And stuff like that. So you know who you are out there. Uh, drop me a line. I'm wondering, you okay? <laughs> anyway, so you can put up with that on me. Ugh. But anyways, that's what I'm doing. Now. Since we got that this one out, we're going to have a whole bunch more just dropping right after we know that. I'm just going to try to get... We got solar wands. We got other videos. We got all sorts of stuff going over. We're going to go over gobs of things. And some of it, like if Gil, you're still watching this at this point, I'm sorry. I'm going to make your brain hurt on a couple of them. But it's good, useful information to know. We really got to cover a lot of really important aspects here. There's lots to go over. But, yeah, I'm back. Uh, and plus... You know, the holiday hell is now gone. I don't have to deal with this anymore. Just a couple little other things to run up for. But it won't be the giant tear my hair out sort of problems. <sighs> oh, well. You know, sometimes family. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But what I like to say is, you know, family doesn't have to be by blood. And blood doesn't necessarily have to be family. Sort of an excuse. But anyways, don't even burden you with all my crazy yakking. Well, that's it. Check out the description uh, for the link on this one. It's a really interesting read. And like I said, I'm a total nerd. I love finding out stuff I have not known about and something new to discover. New information. Juicy, juicy information. I love it. <laughs> Take care, everyone. This is Reed. Out for now.